hey guys welcome back to my channel so today i'm going to be doing my dubai review finally i know i've been saying like for weeks and weeks and weeks ever since i got back from dubai um that i was going to do a review for the actual city like talking about everything we did talking about the stuff that i like talking about how i planned the trip and all that stuff people wanted to know a lot of detail about it i've uploaded three vlogs from the dubai trip if you haven't seen them make sure you're subscribed to life with the logan's channel there's two more left i'm not necessarily going to be talking about saving money for trips because i have a blog post that you guys can check out if you wanted to know more about how to save money it's victoriouslogan.com why in the world did you go to Dubai? So actually, I don't really know. My favorite Disney movie is Aladdin. So I feel like ever since I was a little kid, I've always been kind of like fascinated with the Arabian world. I was looking at vacations for the Dominican because a lot of people say the Dominican is nice. When I was looking at the Dominican, I was just like, I feel like I've been to a beach before. We've been to Mexico. I feel like the Dominican would kind of be similar to Mexico. And so I was just like, I want to do something really different. When I was little, I went to the UK and I was young, so I don't really remember. So I really wanted to go somewhere like in Asia or something, like somewhere really, really far and do something really different. My friend was telling me about Dubai. So I was like, let me look up Dubai and just see what it is. Google knows your life. So if you Google something, it's going to pop up at least 10 times before you're done thinking about it. I looked it up one day, didn't really think much of it. Then like maybe two days later, ads and stuff start popping up for Dubai. People I follow on Instagram were going to Dubai. And I was like, is this Google or is this God? So I looked up the vacation to see how much it was and I saw that it was in my budget and I was like, we could do that, let's do that. So I kind of priced out the trip just to see what it would cost me, like hotel, flight, um, things to do, everything, just to see how much it would be. Or anytime I book a trip, I book through Expedia. Um, I try to get a rough estimate overall whenever I book my trips. Like I give myself at least three to four months to plan a trip. So I never just jump into something. I don't ever want to like start planning something and not have all my ducks in a row to make it happen. Because our anniversary is in February, so I always start looking up my vacations for our anniversary um, about three months out. So usually around October, I start asking Cam, where do you wanna go, what do you wanna do? Then November, I start saving. I save all of November, December, I book the trip. I did do a lot of research, but mostly just online. It's really easy to do research nowadays because you can Google anything. Um, so I pretty much just Googled everything. But I always suggest going through Instagram profiles, hashtags, and Googling. So Dubai is a luxury city. It's like going to the future. They're so far ahead there because they have so much money. Basically the city was kind of founded in like the 70s I think. They have enough oil to last them the next 65 years. So they're banking from oil. Because of the wealth there that they have, it kind of became like a more touristy place. So it's not like you'll get there and nothing's in English and nobody speaks English. No, it is completely westernized. Everybody knows English so you won't have to learn a language beforehand. Everything is in English in Arabic so you won't have to worry about trying to decipher code. People say that Dubai is very expensive. I did not find Dubai to be that expensive. I'm from the South, I'm from Texas, so everything is cheap in Texas. So whenever I go anywhere other than Texas, I know I'm gonna be forking out some, some cash. You know, anywhere other than the South, you're gonna be forking out some cash. That's just how it is. Dubai was not any more expensive than New York, LA, Miami, anything like that you know if i would have went to new york or la and stayed for a week in a hotel in a nice five-star hotel and you know went shopping and ate out every single day and had to pay for transportation every single day i would have spent the same if not more the expensive part of this experience itself is getting there so the flight the hotel it is such a far travel it's not like you're going down the street and spending all this money you're going to a whole nother country once you spent that money and you're over there you really don't have to spend anything else all of the fun stuff that we did was not expensive there were a few things that were expensive like the dinner cruise but if you're gonna go to the mall the mall is free of course everything that you do at the mall is gonna cost but it's the mall like we went to four different malls and didn't buy a whole lot of stuff we were just walking around and that was fun you can just go sightsee and not spend a lot of money. The tours aren't very expensive. Pretty much everything, once we exchanged it and converted it into dollars, ended up being about the same price as American stuff. Their currency there, Durham, is like triple our price. So something there could be like 150 Durham, but that's only like 
fifty dollars I think. I don't even know. Not even that. Probably not even that. Our dollar goes a long way in Dubai, so seems like a lot of money, but it's really not. The only reason why I feel like it would be expensive is if you do absolutely everything there is to do in Dubai. Because there's a lot of stuff to do and obviously it's gonna cost you money, but I feel like it's worth it. It's a, it's an experience of a lifetime. We ended up spending a little over a thousand dollars on everything that we did. I mean, we did a lot, a lot, a lot. So I think it was worth the thousand dollars that we spent once we got there. We stayed for six days and the flight, um, we flew Emirates nonstop. So we ended up spending $3,000 for just the flight and the hotel itself for two people. We spent $1,000 on stuff when we got there. So $4,000, which I feel like is not bad because when I went to Cancun, we spent $3,000 on that trip. To most people, that seems like a lot of money, but if you split it up in payments, how I plan my trips, I don't book everything and buy everything at once. Like I don't buy the trip the day before the trip. You know what I mean? So if you buy your trip months in advance and then pay yourself back, how you budget it is really going to determine whether or not it's a lot of money for you. But um, I mean, it's worth the saving to me. It's, it's an experience worth saving for. So of course, with any trip, it's what you make it. If you wanted to go to Dubai and relax on the beach for seven days, by all means, do that it's a place of adventure to me it's a place of exploring i don't feel like it's a relaxing vacation um so that's why i don't really recommend it for like honeymoons if you are the adventurous type and you don't like super lovey-dovey type stuff then go for dubai but if you're looking for something a little bit more romantic you would be better off going to like an italy or paris or something like a love type city there's not a lot of pda and like nudity and stuff going on because people are very conservative over there and they're very family oriented because it is a muslim country dubai might not be the place to cake you know you and bay can cake in italy or something so i feel like it's great for family trips uh, i definitely think it's a very cool and exciting place to go um beyond the fact that it's just not the place to be laid up kissing each other all day Actually, I don't even think I saw anybody kiss each other on the lips the whole time I was there. So uh, it's perfect for me and Cam because we don't do PDA like that. But for people who are like very affectionate and want to go somewhere that's kind of accepting of that, you might want to go to like one of the romance city. So we didn't sleep the whole time. Um, we probably slept like two hours a night every night um, because of the time difference. It was a 10 hour time difference. So when America was going to bed, we were waking up so you can imagine how thrown off i was most mornings if we were doing something in the morning i was sleepwalking uh we went to a museum and i definitely fell asleep while they were giving us a tour of the museum so i don't remember that museum very much the relaxation part of this trip was not there but I didn't mind because I was overseas and I'm doing everything. So if you know anything about the Muslim culture, you know that they are very conservative, especially when it comes to how you dress. Of course, it is very westernized. So there are a lot of tourists, a lot of people from overseas, a lot of people from Asia and the UK and Africa, everywhere. Um, so a lot of the people there aren't, you know, fully covered up. Some people do walk around with regular clothes on or whatever, but there is that contrast where there are people who are covered up all the way up to their eyes. You don't necessarily have to have your shoulders and your knees covered. I definitely did wear some like skirts where my knees were showing. I did wear a shirt or two that my shoulders were showing. And at nighttime, I put on my freak outfit. I feel like I dress modest. I feel like I dress modest, me personally. A lot of people call me out and say that I don't dress modest. You can think whatever you want. I feel like I dress pretty modest for the most part. The majority of the trip, I was modestly dressed anyway. Um, plus it's a very affluent and wealthy city. So it was more of like making a fashion statement more than anything else. Like I was just trying to look fly. It was February. So I went during the winter month. There is kind of like LA weather. It's like 80 during the day and 60, 70s at night. So it's kind of cool. So I did want to make sure that I was at least a little bit covered up just in case the weather did kind of get a little cool throughout the day. But they do have signs in the mall that say, be conservative, be considerate of people who are more conservative and things like that. And I did get some funny looks when I went out at night and I had my shoulders out or had on some shorts or whatever. Um, I did get a few people looking, but 
I just thought they thought I was cute. On the metro that they have, because they do have a metro there, men and women can't sit together. So we only rode the metro one time because Cameron didn't like that he had to be on the other side of the train um, away from me. Women and children sit on one side, men have to stand on the other side. So it is kind of conservative in those aspects as well because you will get fined if a man is sitting down in the women's section. And in most places, alcohol isn't served during the day, so we drank mocktails. I don't really drink like that, so having a mocktail every day was perfectly fine with me. So if you're trying to get turned, if you're trying to be booed up, if you're trying to dress real sexy, wear your freedom dress every day, you might not want to choose Dubai because they are a little bit more conservative. However, you can get away with it. It won't be as good of an experience for you. It was a very nice and clean, very, very clean. Oh my God, Dubai was very, very clean. I loved how clean it was. It's also a very, very safe city. There's no crime, little to no crime. I didn't see a lot of homeless people when I was there. I didn't see a lot of economic disparity. Like some people say that the economic disparity there is really bad. Like you can tell who's rich and who's not. I couldn't. Cause like when I go to LA, in New York, like there's homeless people everywhere. I can feel the shattered broken dreams on the ground. LA to me is land of broken dreams. I'm sorry if you live there. I'm sorry if you're from LA and you rep LA like that, but Dubai, I felt so much wealth. Like it was like, it made me want to come back and hustle. Like it made me want to get some money. Like it made me want to be better in life. You know what I mean? Like I also liked how religious people are there. Um, there were like prayer rooms in every building. Um, they were very big on prayer. So you could definitely see people on the side of the road praying at certain times during the day. Uh, in the malls, they do shut the music off at certain times and pray. It was overall a really interesting and eye-opening experience. I really enjoyed the difference in culture. As far as the food goes, I was, I'm a very picky person. I'm very, very picky, but I love international foods. I'm not necessarily a fan of American food. Like I don't pig out on American food, like hot dogs and burgers and stuff. I love pizza, but that's about it. And Dubai is not specific to one type of food. They have different kinds of foods and cuisine everywhere. They literally have everything. Like they have KFC. They have Church's Chicken over there. It's called Texas Chicken, but it is Church's. It's the same logo. But they have Cheesecake Factory. They have California Pizza Kitchen, Red Lobster. They have everything. We had Indian food, Lebanese, Thai. Yeah, we ate a lot of shawarma and hummus. I definitely feel like it's a place that if you go there, get cultured. Don't just eat what you know. Eat new stuff, try new stuff. Nothing made us sick. I feel like the quality of the food there is much better than quality of food in America, obviously, because our food is full of GMO and processed stuff. Everything there was pretty fresh and it was really good. I didn't end up getting sick or anything. Um, so I definitely can appreciate that. And it was very healthy. Everything I ate was very healthy, I feel like, because nothing made me feel heavy. Even when I was full, I didn't feel heavy. Um, and because we did so much walking and, and exploring, we really weren't weighed down all the time. Pretty much everything is gluten-free. Um, so you really can't go wrong. So what is there to do in Dubai? Dubai is awesome. It's like, there's so much stuff to do that you are never gonna get bored. I would suggest booking a week in advance um, everything that you're gonna do. So make sure like you go on Groupon or something to get the best deals. You just wanna make sure that you like give yourself enough time to do everything because you're gonna run out of time if you don't. Prices may be more expensive booking the day of or booking at the hotel. So like I said, Groupon, Groupon, Groupon. The world's tallest building. Malls that are freaking gigantic. They have the biggest malls in the world. The mall had indoor skiing, um, in, an indoor aquarium, and underwater zoo. Uh, they had like ice skating, every store, every store, every store that you can think of. Pretty much anything that you want to do was at the mall. And if you didn't get enough at the mall, there's always the Dubai Marina. They had a fountain outside that had a water show every like hour, I think, or every 30 minutes. And you could just stand there and watch that for hours. Like it was just beautiful. The architecture and the lighting in every building was amazing. So you're definitely gonna wanna take a lot of pictures if you go. Did the Miracle Garden tour, where it's like a huge garden full of flowers and we took a lot of pictures, beautiful scenery. You can stroll with your boo. I would suggest do the soup markets. I heard the soup market are awesome. I didn't get to go to the soup markets because we ran out of time. Um, but there's like a gold market and a spice market. You can go to the desert, do a desert safari. The desert safari was super, super fun. Um, we got to ride a camel. Cameron did an ATV uh, off-roading. Um, we rode in the cars on the way there and they like had like a sand dune experience. That was cool. We got to watch a show and you have a buffet and the food was really good. The dinner cruise was cool. The food wasn't that great on the dinner cruise. Um, and it was kind of cold. In my experience, I already done a dinner cruise in Cancun. So I knew what to expect. 
So it wasn't really that exciting. It was fun, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't really anything that I was super excited about. The Grand Mosque, the Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque, was the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. It was so stunning. Everything about it was beautiful. It was well worth the trip to Abu Dhabi. Um, that was the most amazing thing I had ever seen in my life. I just wasn't fond of the tour. So here's how I feel about tours. I feel like if you're gonna go on a tour of something, you should definitely like do that the first day that you get there because you're gonna wanna like go back to some of the places that you go to on the tour and explore them on your own. They give you like 20, 30 minutes at each place that you visit. You don't really have a lot of time to explore. And because stuff in Dubai is so big and luxurious, you're not gonna go to one mall and stay for 20 minutes and see everything you wanna see. Cause we did a tour of Abu Dhabi. We went to the Grand Mosque, we saw some palaces, we went to some heritage village, and then we went to Ferrari World, but it really was just the mall that had Ferrari World in it. And we didn't actually get to go in Ferrari World. So we were kind of upset about that because it said on the tour, Ferrari World, and we thought we were gonna get to go in and like ride rides and stuff, but we couldn't. I feel like it was such a tease to do the tour and we should have done it on our own. Um, but it was still really nice and still really cool to do. I just wish we would have done it earlier so that we would have more time to do more stuff that we, we saw that we wanted to do. Now, as far as transportation goes, there is the Metro and you can rent a car. However, I wouldn't recommend renting a car because they drive really crazy over there. And I mean, you don't wanna get stopped and pulled over and in trouble in Dubai. So I feel like the best way to get around would be a taxi because it's the quickest way to get places. More so, than, more so taxis than Uber because if you're traveling internationally, you don't want to be using your cell phone data outside of the US. And everywhere has Wi-Fi, but, but when you get in the car, you're not gonna be able to use your Wi-Fi. But my phone stayed on airplane mode, so taxi it was. Unfortunately, taxis are not the cheapest option. The cheapest option would be to use the Metro. The Metro was cool, it was clean, it was nice, and it got us to where we needed to go. It pretty much goes in a straight line. Using the Metro will take up a lot of your time. Unless you budget your time really, really well, I, w I wouldn't suggest using the Metro. As far as the hotel goes, I really liked the hotel that we stayed in. It was really nice. I just didn't like how far it was from everything else. I wish I would have looked that up before I actually booked the flight because I booked the hotel because we ended up doing a lot of taxiing back and forth, which was fine. But like I said, it would be a lot cheaper on us if we would have stayed near everything that we were doing. So just keep that in mind. Also, when you're booking a hotel, keep in mind that every hotel in Dubai is like five stars. There are not really a lot of all-inclusive options if you wanted to do an all-inclusive deal but we ended up not staying at the hotel a lot so all-inclusive wasn't necessarily something that I missed out on because I feel like we never really were there anyways we ate at the hotel only for breakfast so I ended up getting a hotel that had a breakfast buffet um, a free breakfast buffet that way when we did eat breakfast we were eating at the hotel and it was free just make sure that when you're booking your hotel you are aware of the tourism fees you're aware of resort fees room service spa services anything that you're gonna spend money on when you get there so make sure you do have have enough money to cover that um, I think when we got there we ended up spending like $200 in fees so if you're hip to Airbnb you can do an Airbnb I'm personally I am bougie I like hotels so I stayed in a hotel but you definitely could rent an apartment or do an Airbnb for a lot cheaper personally I just love the hotel experience I like to have my towels folded and nice when I get into my room I like my bed made for me I like to be able to call room service and order something just in case I need it I like to have free water bottles waiting on me at the dough that's just me I just like the luxury of a five-star hotel but if you are cool with washing your own dishes and making your own bed get you an airbnb girl i just prefer not to wash dishes on vacation <laughs> i feel like you do need to get some cash when you get there do a currency exchange get some cash the taxis take cash and there's a lot of stuff little things here and there that you might want to buy with cash so just make sure you do frequently get some cash um from the currency exchanges just to make sure that you have some on hand we got about 600 durhams which is about 200 dollars in cash um to start off with and that ended up being enough to do a lot of stuff so you will need shopping money so go ahead and get shopping money ready too. It's the best shopping on earth and it's tax free. We flew Emirates, um, which was really, really nice. We did ride coach, so I feel like our seating experience wasn't any better than any other flight that I've been on. Um, the, the seats weren't comfortable, obviously, because it's a, it's a coach seat, so it wasn't comfortable. I would recommend if you are really, really bougie and you want to get that experience, do business economy um, because they have the pods. 
Um, and you have a lot more leg room and you can lay down and stuff. So it's a little bit more comfortable for you. However, we flew regular economy. So uh, we were on a regular economy budget. But the food was good. Um, there was complimentary drinks, complimentary everything. I did have a little bit of some wine so I could go to sleep. And I slept the whole way. It was a 13 hour flight. I don't really remember much of it. It went by really quick for me. There were free movies, free entertainment, so I really didn't feel like I was um, bored. Um, and I especially like that it was a straight through flight. I do not do stops. I hate stops. Straight through or die. If you have flying anxiety though, don't do too much with the wine because you will have a bridesmaids experience. I did have a bridesmaids experience. There's a woman on the wings, she's churning butter. That actually happened to me, so go to sleep. Go to sleep, don't wake up, and don't look out the window. The trip was amazing, it was great. I didn't have any issues with anything. I did not have any bad experiences with anything. Um, everything was really awesome. It was really, really fun. I'm trying to think of some complaints, and I can't. Um, some people asked if it, was, if it was uncomfortable, people were nice. People were pretty nice for the most part, I mean. Middle Eastern people, I've been around a lot of them, and I had a lot of them as friends growing up, and I've been to a lot of their engagements and weddings and stuff, so I know kind of what their culture is like and how conservative they are and things like that so I knew about most of that stuff they're not as like bubbly and excited as Americans are you know what I mean for the most part they're nice they're nice people I don't ever really have a problem with them treating me differently or treating me bad because I'm African-American or whatever um, I definitely didn't have a problem with any of them like giving me the side eye or nothing in fact I actually found that a lot of the women were staring at me when I was walking through the mall and stuff, and I, it was mostly women who had their makeup on fleek. So I feel like they, they recognized the fleekness and we like made this eye contact and they smiled at me because they knew like, girl, your eyebrows, like, ooh, your makeup, your highlight is popping. Cause that's what I was looking at when I saw them. So I feel like we had that connection. Um, if you guys have any questions about Dubai, if you have any questions about anything that I talked about in the video, make sure you leave a comment down below and I will answer it for you. Um, like I said, make sure to check out the blog post on how to save money and how to budget a trip um i will give a little bit more in-depth insight on that if you want to see pictures video footage make sure to check out the vlog make sure to check out my instagram and my website will have pictures of dubai as well that i did not post on instagram so make sure to check that out please give it a thumbs up if you want to see more travel videos and reviews and things like that i will do more like it and that's it i'll talk to you guys soon bye